So what exactly happens when you do a fast, especially a, a, an extended fast like I'm doing in my 30-day fasting challenge? <clears throat> this is a complicated question that gets misunderstood, misrepresented all the time. All right, so I want to clarify first things first. A lot of the data, most of the data that we have on fasting, in particular what they call autophagy, which is essentially the recycling and detoxification pathways and processes within your body right? That's what autophagy is. When they talk about it, most of the data comes from yeast, worms, and lower life form experiments, right? That's what they're testing and they got information. Some of it then comes from animal studies, mostly in rats. Then there are some human studies, but they can't test the same thing. So a lot of it is extrapolated from a lot of different places. It's not set in stone. It's not a system that follows exact steps and people get the exact results or changes from the exact amount of times. You have to understand that. Think of it like this. If we took 10 random people from the United States, adults, half men, half women, randomly selected, and we all gave them an exercise, a physical exercise, a 30-minute workout to do every day for a week. At the end of the week, what changes will they all have the same? It's a very difficult question to ask. They won't have the same changes. It depends on how um, well they were in shape prior to starting this. Some could be a professional athlete. Some could have never exercised before. Some can be in their 20s. Some could be in their 70s. Some could be after two spinal surgeries. Some can be going through it with a cold. You don't know. You don't know their metabolic fitness. You don't know their general health. You don't know their experience. You don't know any of it. You don't know how much they push, how hard they go, what they they, uh, how much they rest, all these different things. So it is impossible to say what is going to change for all 10 people over that period, even though they're doing the same workout every single day, even if they follow the same diet every single day, even if they had the same sleep every single day. You tested it, it would be all over the board. Some would lose fat, but at different times. Some would gain muscle, but at different times. Some would be sore, some more than others at different times. It was impossible to map out and to take that information and try to make a map that what to show people what happens when you exercise for seven days would be totally misleading. And a lot of the information about what happens during fasting in my book does that. I'm going to try not to, but I will go through what is out there and what people are saying and know. Take a look at this. This is the 48-hour play-by-play, okay? This is based off of a lot of information that we know from those models that I told you about, the limited ones we have, okay? What happens in the, in the beginning of the fast? Okay, you stop fat storing. Just because you're fasting doesn't mean you're burning fat, but does mean you won't put more uh, energy into fat and store fat. Your blood sugar will come down. Your insulin levels will come down. Why? Because you're not eating. Blood pressure comes down. When insulin goes down, blood pressure goes down. Insulin goes up, blood pressure goes up. It's very rare that you can see high blood pressure with low insulin. It just doesn't happen. Insulin is a driver of that. What's called macro autophagy, what most people call autophagy, the easier signs and signals, there's three different types of uh, autophagy that we can test and we know, but macro is the general one. It starts to happen immediately. As soon as you come out of the fed state, which means you end eating in a number of hours, could be two hours to eight hours, depending on the person, the metabolic fitness, health, and experience, they go into, uh, they go into the uh, macro autophagy detoxification, recycling, repair phase, or the fasted state, right? When that happens, ketones goes up. Why? Because blood sugar is coming down, ketones go up. Your energy requirements and use doesn't change. Your energy and requirements and use doesn't change at this point. Only thing that's changing is what you're making your energy from. Blood sugar goes down. You can't make it from that. Ketones go up. It's still the same. That's a normal process. Fat burning then will start once you're well into this phase as you continue on your fast. Metabolism actually goes up, especially in the early days of a fast. Your metabolism goes up about 15%. Why? Because it has all of this energy that was dedicated to the breakdown of food. That could be up to 40% of our caloric intake just for breaking down the food that the caloric intake came from right? It's not there. So it reshifts and it re redirects things and, and our metabolism goes up, all right? As you go deeper into the fast, and again, people clock this by hours, and that's just as, as 
faulty to think about as clocking someone's changes from exercise by hours in the example I gave earlier. But here it goes. Your human growth hormone goes up. Metabolism is going up. Insulin is going down, which allows growth hormone to go up. What does that do? It stops degradation of your muscle and protein right there. Okay. You don't start eating your, your, your muscle because muscle is more important than fat and it is survival value is very high. So it will maintain it. So instantly it triples your, um, your growth hormone to preserve your muscles, to make sure you're getting your energy from your fat. Inflammation will drop dramatically right there. The anti-inflammatory people say, well, well, fasting raises cortisol. Yes, it does. Look down low, a little bit lower. It does raise cortisol. Why? Because cortisol is your anti-inflammatory hormone. It's not your stress hormone that causes inflammation. It's a response to it. Inflammation, it goes up. Inflammation comes down. Normal. That will balance out over time. You're not getting any negative effects from that cortisol increase. Okay, visceral fat starts to liberate fat, the fat around your organs, the fat in your organs, like liver fat and pancreas fat starts to come out first. Hunger drops because insulin is low. It's not teasing and, and whipping your hunger hormones. So your hunger will start to go down. Autophagy goes up even further. It's deeper levels of autophagy. Those three different kinds I said are all starting to kick in at that point. Neuroplasticity, pl neuroplasticity starts to increase. Your brain starts to expand its, its connections. It doesn't make new cells at that point. It just makes more connections. It is going into hyperdrive. It is focused on what's going on. Exercise enhanced autophagy happens. If you're continuing with your physical activity and exercising, you'll get more out of it in the state as you fast. Skin elasticity goes up. Okay, elasticity, you want it to be elastic. You don't want it to be uh, not elastic or inelastic and, and, and stuff like that. So you'll start to see things tighten up in your face, in your hands, chin. In our fasting group right now, in the 30-day fast, we you, you might have seen the comments where someone has lost over 20 pounds now or in, in here in day 10, and they have lost what they call, these are their terms, not mine, their turkey neck and their double chin. Interesting, right? Skin elasticity starts to take it up. Just on that note, when I've worked with people th through losing over 100 pounds with fasting, we don't see the skin problems that people see using, say, bariatric surgery. I've worked with people post-bariatric surgery who have had skin issues and they had the operations and they are dramatic. The difference is night and day. The autophagy, recycling, detoxification, and breakdown process that we go through in fasting seems to target skin first. It will tighten it up where other methods, especially uh, medicated and uh, surgery procedures, don't do that. They don't go through that. So this is a side note on that. Now, brain IDE, insulin degradation enzyme goes up dramatically. Insulin degradation enzyme is only called that because they identified it as degrading insulin first, but it does something else. What it does is break down plaque, early plaque formations in the brain, but it can only focus on one thing at a time. And when there's tons of insulin around, it's always breaking down that insulin because it's toxic to the brain. And the, what ends up happening is those plaques can build up. That's how they build up. That's why Alzheimer's dementia is considered type three diabetes. You can do a whole nother video on that. So that enzyme starts to kick in and it breaks down placking or scar tissue or fat that shouldn't be in the brain causing those problems. Okay. Your insulin sensitivity goes up significantly. You become more sensitive to insulin. Max, you max out your autophagy state, generally speaking, around day three to day four. Your glucose, you got, you're working on glucose neogenesis, gluconeogenesis. Your body is making all the sugar that it needs. Remember, body can make sugar very easily. It doesn't need any. We have no uh, essential carbohydrates in our dietary needs. We don't need to have them because the body makes them easily. It makes them from lactate, the buildup, uh, the buffer buildup that happens when we exercise. We make it from ketones. We can make it from glycerol that gets liberated when we break down uh, triglycerides into fatty acids. You can make it from a lot of different things in the body, and it does. It can make it from amino acids. What amino acids? The most abundant amino acids that we have in our body. Just because gluconeogenesis is driven by amino acids does not mean it's coming out of your muscle. 
your fat mass is 10% protein. Your whole body is practically protein. It can be coming from recycling. It can be from a lot of different places. It does not mean it's necessarily coming from your muscle. Your immune system goes up. There's some great studies that show that after a three-day fast, when you refeed well, your immune system goes into hyperdrive and you essentially create a brand new set of, of fighter cells in the whole body. You have a new immune system. So that's what it's gearing up to do. Your longevity genes all turn on. Your accelerated aging genes turn off. That is powerful. This is what we see in rats when they go into fasting states and they live 30% to twice as long as they would normally. Pretty incredible. You're turning those on. Now, this, this slide ends at 48 hours. It might branch into 72 hours. Remember, this is a gross generalization of what can happen. Doesn't mean it will happen and when, but you get the idea. Now, when it comes to longer fasts, the only thing that has pretty good documented information is our fast up to seven days. And you can find that in uh, Fasting as a Metabolic Disease, the, the, the medical textbook, right, written by uh, Safery, uh, Thomas Safery. Great book. It's a textbook. It's very, very medical and very, very difficult. There's other books that I can go into later that are based on that. You can learn. But basically, he says a one seven day water fast a year will stop the early formation of precancerous growths. And it's something like 93 to 97 percent, possibly more in different areas. Right. Completely ruin them ruin their chance of becoming cancer because they don't even get to the precancerous state because they're cleaned up. They are recycled. They are detoxified. They are autophagied, so to speak. That's what the process does. Beyond seven days, there isn't much data. Why? Because they don't do studies on people longer than that. They don't keep it. There are some from the 60s and 70s that give some information and some general um, uh, concepts. And then we have a lot of anecdotal stuff from fasting centers and individuals like me and other people who have done longer fasts up to 30 days and so forth and so on. Do I think personally that we go into deeper and deeper levels of autophagy? No, I don't. Once you hit a system and get it running efficiently to 100%, 100% is as far as it goes. The key at that point is how long does it stay at 100%? So the benefits of a five, seven day or longer fast, I don't think is anything deeper in say detox or recycling or healing than a five day or three day. I think you just, you just in that state longer so it can do more, obviously break down more fat, you lose more weight, but it can clean up more in your body. And a lot of us have a lot of things to clean up. Old medical textbooks have, are, are based on the concept of how to heal anything. And they use 30 day fast. Basically, bottom line, for ever, even down back to uh, Hippocrates and Socrates and, and, the, and the Greek philosophers knew that fasting heals. Fasting heals. Nothing beats it. You want to heal your body, you stop eating. 30 days is a great window, and just every, about every tissue in your body is, is turned over. And not only that, when you refeed, you're getting stem cells in a massive amount, more than you can freeze and inject and go through those processes, and you have an opportunity to replenish, rejuvenate, and euthanize or make younger, not euthanize, not kill. You make you more youthful your what you have when you have it, right? You want those stem cells to not only be produced, you want them to adhere to where they need to go, muscle, skin, brain, liver, wherever that is, and you want them to stay. That's why the complete fasting cycle has four phases, the prep and planning, the support before and after, the fast itself, and the reinforcement phase after all very important. So are you getting more out of a seven day fast than you are a three? I think so based on the cancer as a metabolic disease information and research. Are you getting more out of 10 or 30 than you are seven? More? No, but you're in that state longer. So you will get a gross amount more of change in your body. That's where I think the benefit comes. Now, a lot of people talk about a spiritual experience that occurs during fasting. I can't quite say I've had that. I have definitely had clarity of mind. I have definitely had motivation. I have a problem finishing things. I can start, I have things I've started for my entire life that I never finished. I have, I've noticed that my ability to finish and, and put a bow on things is a lot easier when I fast and, and when I come off of my fast. I have noticed that my motivation increases, my excitement and my drive, right? Drive is a big deal. Hormonally sensitive test testosterone in men and women promotes drive. 
It doesn't promote aggression. It doesn't promote these the, the roid rage type of concept. It doesn't promote irritability. It provides the sensation of drive, of doing things that are difficult to do, right? To, to face confrontations, to get through a hard moment, to face challenges, to do something that's difficult to do. And that becomes more sensitive to man and woman alike. So keep that in mind. So that comes out in spades. Some people do get extreme clarity. They write their best work. They 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 have epiphanies. They, they learn about themselves and others. And that's great. I Hopefully we're always doing that all the time. But if it's enhanced in fasting, I will take it. So that's my two cents of what happens and what the benefits are of a prolonged fast. So when someone online asks me, what's the point? What do you want to get out of a 30-day fast? Why should I do 30 days over three days? It's not an easy, that sounds like an easy question to shoot me in a comment on Facebook, but it is a difficult question to answer. But now I think you have my look, outlook on it. Hopefully it makes sense to you. And I'll, I know if it doesn't, you'll tell me in the comments and we'll go a little bit deeper. But that's the extended fast philosophy from the insulin-friendly living and Don Clum point of view.